was, uh, what did you feel was the right time now to make the film? Why? Uh, Three years old, you know, I saw the movie, I saw the script for this movie. And I understand the script has been developing for seven years. Yeah, I think this is very unique to, to fight monsters on the wall. Yeah, I really want to try this. Matt, everyone else, what kind of challenges did you face doing this type of movie? Especially with this kind of different movie in the past. Yeah. <coughs> The biggest challenge working with Pedro. Yeah, I, I um, it, it, the offer came to me out of the blue. Um, I, I've been chasing Johnny Mo for 20 years, and um, and suddenly got this. You know, as you say, you have a fangirl moment. Like we're like serious fanboys of his, and uh, and I went in to meet with him and. We were in an office, and it was about this size, and it was surrounded with these storyboards, um, and they unveiled them, basically. And I saw this, I mean, first of all, I, I, I knew it was like nothing I'd ever seen, like nothing I'd ever done, and it was bigger than anything I, I could imagine. And, you know, it was the Great Wall as if it was designed by Leonardo da Vinci, and the, and the wall kind of came alive, and I, I just looked at it, and, it just it, it just it just blew me away, and then the final thing he showed me was what the monsters would look like, and you know, and it was Yang Mo. So I, I said, yes. How inside China uh, the reaction was like when it, when you were going to shoot in English with an international cast and have Matt Damon and Pedro in some big roles, if there was any um, nervousness about that or. Uh, Chinese actually know about this kind of story for a long time. Yeah, they know we're going to make this movie. Yeah, I think the Chinese audience really look forward to this. Movie. They know that we know that it's going to come out on December 16th in China. And everybody's looking forward to it in China. That's the kind of story. This kind of collaboration is the biggest collaboration ever. It's a really big opportunity for us. It sets a milestone for cinema in China. If this movie succeeds, it's going to benefit the uh, Chinese and American film uh, business. It's going to create a new opportunity to collaborate. And you know, we're going to work closely, much more closely together in the future. Other than that, there's no pressure at all. <laughs> How different uh, specifically is the like the action sequences that you have to film in a movie of this caliber from the, the man who directed Hero and House Flying Daggers? How does that compare to the Bourne films, Game of Thrones? Well, we got there like a month early, and I walked onto the you know they were building these unbelievable sets, and then. And I walked in and there were all these guys from the Shaolin Temple like doing flips off these walls and I was like, oh my god, what is this thing? I mean, it was just the amount of work that went into this is just, you know, it's, it's, it's staggering. And, um, and watching everybody prepare, you know, there's these sequences where these women are, are, are playing these drums and, and like to, to, you know, to, to, to communicate to everybody on the wall what's happening and how close the monsters are. And, we would hear these drums. We'd get to work every day and be in the makeup chair, and you'd hear these like drums. You know, these women were, and it's like it's awesome the amount of of of, of work that you know the whole crane core, which is this really cool. It's all the women, female like, only fighting, female only fighting. But but Johnny Mo separated the army into colors, right? And very specific colors that he because you know, he worked so much with color, and 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 the blue. Uh, color is, is called the Crane Corps, and these are these women who dive off of these, led by, uh, you know, Lin May, who's the engine team plays, and like, they, 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 they do these like acrobatic flips, and like watching these women train for this, it was just, it's, it's, it's so big, it's just like, it's, it's, it's really beyond anything uh, that I've ever seen. That's I mean, the Bourne stuff, we just go and do it, we just like, <laughs> make it up. You know, this was, this was, these people actually were preparing for, you know, for a movie. Um, first, Jean, I'm sorry I can't, can't say your name, <laughs> but thank you for all your filmography with uh, all your films and um, congratulations to you all for working with him. And I, I wanted to ask you, Matt, and you, Pedro, has young young actors, young young people here in the Occident, 
did you ever think about working with with him in a movie fighting monsters on well, the not great fighting ball. monsters, but I thought a lot about working with him. Um, <laughs> you know, Pedro and I, like Pedro said, like, he called them pinch me moments, and it really was. Like, we talked about it um, in real time as we were making the movie. Like, can you believe we're doing this? I mean, you'd walk onto these sets, and they were massive. The scale was so big. And at the center of this hurricane was Yanni Mo, like, and watching him kind of create this thing on the massive canvas was, was just like, you know, we couldn't believe that we were a part of it. And we were a couple of the colors that he was painting with. And, and uh, it, just, it just felt, it just felt like, like, a, like a dream. I never thought I'd work with somebody like Jenny Mo. It was always a world uh, apart from, from, from my experience. And I thought it would be something that I would just live my life admiring. So I, 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 it's hard to even describe having been able to have been on that set and just have him address me as one of his actors. Question for Matt. Matt, you're a good progressive guy who's been on the wrong end of the diversity issues in the last couple of years, some controversies. And I'm just wondering, personally, from that perspective, if that's leaving you a little jaded or frustrated, but also how you respond to the whole Mighty Whitey charges. Yeah, it was a fucking bummer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, but I had a few reactions. I mean, I was surprised, uh, I guess because it was based on a teaser. It wasn't even a full trailer, let alone the movie. So to get those charges levied against you, what bummed me out, actually, I read The Atlantic religiously, and like there was an article in The Atlantic, and I was like, really, guys? Like, you, you know, I just, it was, um, I mean, to me, whitewashing, like, it, I think of Chuck Connors when he played Geronimo, you know, like, and I, look, there are far more nuanced versions of it, and I do try to be sensitive to that, but, you know, like, Pedro called me, and he goes, he goes, yeah, I mean, it, he goes, we, we are guilty of whitewashing, he goes, we all, we all know that only the Chinese defended the wall against the monsters when they attacked. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I never said that. <laughs> and look, I mean, it was, it, was, it was nice to have, like, you know, to react a little sarcastically because we were wounded by it, you know? It, it, we do take that seriously. That's a serious thing to... And we don't want people to be kept from work that they wouldn't have the opportunity otherwise to see that it is very, very specifically Chinese. It's Zheng Yimou's lens. It is a creature feature. It's a big, fantastical popcorn entertainment movie, but it has a visual style that is very, very much and it is, And it's and a giant co-production. There are actors we haven't met that are from China. There is a Chinese crew, uh, stars, you know, that, that, that some of the Western world knows, but not, 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 not a lot. So when, and when you look at it from, from like a marketing perspective, right, like, I mean, what's a worse wipeout for a marketing team? than to have that happen, right, as a, as a backlash against the teaser you put out. And I thought of it from their perspective. I went, okay, well, they're trying to establish a number of things with, in 30 seconds or a minute or however much they had. For, it's not a full-length trailer. It's a teaser. And they're trying to tease, A, the monster, right? They're trying, to, they're trying to say, look, it's a visionary filmmaker that you probably don't know, right? They're trying to speak to a bigger audience, not, not us, but like a bigger audience. You probably don't know who this, who this director is in middle America, you know, this incredibly, you know, this is the Steven Spielberg of China, right? Um, don't worry, they speak English in this movie, right? So you hear my voice speaking English. Don't worry, Matt's in the movie, you've seen this guy before, right? So they're trying to establish all these things. And by the way, there are monsters, right? And so, and 30 seconds, and you're done, you know what I mean? Look, if, if, if people see this movie and feel like there's somehow whitewashing involved in a, in a creature feature that we made up. Um, I, I will listen to that with my whole heart, and I will, I, will th I will think about that, and I will try to learn from that. I will be surprised if people see this movie and have that reaction. I would be genuinely shocked. And I, it's, it's, it's a perspective that, as a progressive person, I, I really do agree with and try to listen to and try to be sensitive to. Um, but ultimately, I feel like you, you, are, you are undermining your own credibility when you attack something without seeing it. I think you have, to, you, have to, you have to educate yourself about what it is and then make your attack or your argument, and, and then it's easier to listen to it.